Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another uh, night of First Baptist West Facebook Live. And we're coming to you live from the offices of First Baptist West, and especially Elizabeth's desk. Always, again, like to give her a shout out uh, for allowing us to use her her, her desk. And one of the reasons I always tell everybody that we're doing it at Elizabeth's desk is sometimes she has some really cool, girly things on her desk. And I don't want people at home thinking, boy, the pastor is really getting in touch with his feminine side. So uh, that's why I always let people know that we're coming to you from Elizabeth's desk and not mine. Man, we have a great program for you tonight. And I know every week I seem, I seem to say that, but I, I say it because I mean it, because we really have some good things happening tonight. We have our graduate spotlight that we're going to be showing you. And we're also going to be doing a new segment tonight called uh, Where Are They Now? Uh, so we're going to be showing you... Uh, some uh, over the next couple of weeks, um, just every now and then, we're going to pull in this segment and show you some former members of First Baptist West and where they are now, what God's doing with them in their lives. And so we thought you might want to watch that and, and, and be introduced, reintroduced, or introduced to some of our former members. So we're going to have a, a great time tonight. But what I want to do is I wanted to start off with a, a short video that we that we have that I found and. Many of you know that years ago there was a movie called The Notebook that came out. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I never saw it and don't really plan on seeing it, but uh, it had, a, had an ending. And so what I did was I found this video that I wanted to show you tonight that's just a little fun video of what would have happened if that movie was filmed today with the modern technology uh, that we have. So uh, one is Sherry, uh, my daughter Sherry's friend, Caleb Seaton, created this video, and I want to give him the props for it. Uh, but I hope that you'll enjoy it. I just wanted you to watch this short little video of what would happen if the notebook was made today. So John, why don't we go ahead and show that little video. Why didn't you DM me? Now it's too late. Now I'm with Kyle and he sucks. I sent you 365 snaps. I snapped you every day for a year. You snapped me? Yes. I don't have Snapchat. Well, then who have I been Snapchatting? Hey, that guy sent another snap. <laughs> I don't know who he is, but he sent one every day for the last year. <laughs> what a loser. So, uh, as you can see, you need to always be careful before you hit send. Because you never know where your texts are going out or your Snapchats or your anything else that you have. Uh, just always be ready. So anyway, I want to thank Caleb for allowing us to use his videos, and he has several others that I'm going to uh, uh, just be showing probably uh, throughout the summer, if he, as long as he's okay with that. But uh, I, I think you'll enjoy it, but that was, I just wanted to share that with you uh, very quickly. But now let's go ahead and get ready for the three things that you should know here at First Baptist West. So John, let's get it started. All right, three things that you should know. Number one, the first thing that is the M28 Ministries. Man, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you again for just being so faithful to as the church to help us with everything that we've been doing through there. I want you to know that yesterday we served 350 meals to, to people here in Lawton. So uh, that's been really successful. And again, it, we've only been able to do it because of your faithfulness as a church. So thank you. Uh, for doing it. But I want to make an announcement that uh, I've talked to Jeff Henderson, who's heading up the M28 Ministries, and what he has decided to do is because things are winding down a little bit there for him, we're no longer going to be doing that. He's no longer going to be serving every day, uh, not only serving meals every day, but what they're going to do is they're now going to do it on Saturdays, uh, and they're going to be doing it just a little bit differently, so the numbers will even go down. But we as a church are going to be uh, serving one Saturday every six weeks. And this is uh, what I want you to let you know is June 13th is when First Baptist West will be um, serving that meal. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be getting some uh, uh, information, the schedules and everything that they're going to be needing. We're going to be getting that out to you in the next couple of days. But we wanted to uh, just let you know, uh, again, that that's going to be changing up just a little bit. But we're looking forward to still being able to uh, to serve and to help in any way that we can. So keep in touch with us and let us know if uh, you would like to help us. But that will be on Saturday, 
uh, June 13th, and uh, we'll be, again, getting stuff out to you. So that's the first thing we want you to know. Number two, this is our Class of 2020 Spotlight. Uh, tonight, what we wanted to do is, uh, as you've seen over the last few weeks, we've had one of our seniors here. Well, we weren't able to get with our last senior, but we had we want to go ahead and put a spotlight on this year's senior, uh, Sarah Cottingham. Sarah is a graduate of Cash High School, and she's been a part of us and around us since she was a very little girl. And so uh, we weren't able to get with her to get an interview, but uh, we, we didn't want to forget her. We wanted to show you some pictures of Sarah. And we want to say congratulations to her and all the hard work that she's done. Man, I know she's uh, been very successful in the band uh, there at Cash and uh, looking forward to seeing what God is going to be able to do uh, in her life from this point on. So Katie, uh, uh, for Sarah, congratulations. And uh, we're, we're so proud of you. And, and we have a little gift that we want to make sure that you'll be getting here uh, very shortly. But not only do we have the uh, high school graduates, but we also tonight want to take just a moment to honor those from First Baptist West who are graduating from college. And so we want to put a little spotlight on them as well. And our first college graduate that we have is Derek Dobbinspeck. Derek is graduating uh, with a degree of, from music, in music education from Carrollton State University. So Derek, we're really proud of you and congratulations on your success. Our second one is Lucy Hodges. And Lucy is graduating with a bachelor's degree in animal science and agricultural communications from Oklahoma State University. And so uh, we're again very proud of Lucy. We've been around her again since she was a very little girl. So Lucy, congratulations and we're really proud of you. Our third graduate is Matthew Moran. Matthew is graduating with a Bachelor's of Criminal Justice from Cameron University and uh, has done a great job. And so, uh, Matthew, congratulations uh, to you as well. And our final college graduate that we're going to honor tonight is, is uh, uh, Susan Thompson. Now, Susan has graduated uh, from Cameron University with a Bachelor's in the Bachelor of Arts with History major. And so, uh, Susan, congratulations. I know you've worked hard. Uh, God has opened up many doors for you to be able to get you through this. And so we're very excited and proud of you as well. So thank you uh, for allowing us graduates to honor you tonight. And church, we are proud of all of our graduates. We're honored to get to be a part of their lives, but you continue to be praying for them as well, okay? So again, congratulations, graduates. Number three, the third thing that you need to know is, folks, listen to me. Listen, are you listening? It's time to get back to church. Yes, we get to come back to church this Sunday morning. And so we are so excited. We're thrilled knowing that this is the weekend that, that we've been waiting for for a long time. Now, a couple things that I want to mention about, you, about the, coming back to church, though, is that we're going to start with two services like we've always had. But our first service is not going to be at 8 o'clock. It's going to be at 8.30. So we're going to have everybody come, and, and our service will begin at 8.30. We'll be finished by 9.30 or around that time. Um, and then our second service will be at 10.45, our regular time. That's when we do our live stream services and all that. So we want to encourage you, if you can, come join us uh, in person uh, at 8.30 and 10.45. Now, if you uh, are uncomfortable with that, if you are, are not feeling well, or say you, you just don't live within driving a distance of First Baptist West, we want to re remind you that we will continue with our live stream services at 1045. So please join us there, and uh, we're, we're going to look forward to it. Now, a couple things with that is we're going to be having uh, a need for volunteers, ushers and greeters, to help us get people situated. Because again, we're just not going to be able to open our doors and let people come in and sit where you want. Uh, so we're going to have a meeting. If you would like to help us being an usher or a greeter, if you could be here Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, I'm going to have a quick meeting, kind of go over the uh, some of the schedules, the procedures, different things that you're going to be needing to know to help us. But we are in need. Now, you, just because you come Saturday doesn't mean you're going to help every Sunday. We're also going to have schedules uh, set up for our greeters and ushers. So anybody that would like to come, that's for our youth age up. Uh, men and women, we, we're just needing some help. So please come Saturday morning at 10 o'clock and help us uh, 
get things started back Sunday morning. Man, again, I'm telling you, I am so excited about this. Now, before we get on with our, our, our net first guest, we have a couple things that we want to go over. And, and I have here with us today, um, Carrie is going to be coming. Carrie Skells is going to be helping us uh, with the children's program. So uh, well, let's welcome Carrie for just a moment. And Carrie, we're going to be uh, talking about you have some tips for our kids because our kids are coming back. And again, yeah. for them, it's going to be different. It's not like what we've had in the past. So what are some tips that you have for our parents and our kids? All right. So yeah, every year we do a boot camp for our kindergartners that are going to be coming to service. And this is kind of the same type of thing. We just want to make sure that we get out to you what um, uh, you can expect and what, what they need to expect. And so the first tip I have okay is to set those expectations. Right. Um, and so make sure that the your kids have um, either watched the video, that, the little promo vi video that we have that kind of says things are different or go over those things that are different with them. Um, so you might not be sitting in the same seats that you usually right. sit in. So well, that would be a shock. <laughs> and so, you know, if you actually sit in the same seats, it'd probably be a shock, I would think, yes, at this yes. point. So um, and you can tell them that we're going to have red rows or blue rows, and we're going to have we're gonna sit in whichever row that they tell us to sit in. And, um, right. you know, we're going to follow the ushers, what the ushers want us to do. Um, and one of the things I was telling you about earlier today was, that um you know i went shopping um for groceries at the first when this whole thing started and i'd come home and um faith would ask where's my protein snack and i'd be like they didn't have a snow a protein snack and she's like what do you mean i like the the shelves were empty and they're like they just never really could grasp that the shelves were empty. And so I finally had to take a picture and say, look, the shelves are empty. There wasn't anything there. I couldn't buy your snack, yeah. you okay. know, and, and there's certain things that, you know, we have kept our kids safe and that's a wonderful thing by keeping them home right. and doing that. But some of them don't have any idea what to expect and they, and they might see things that they haven't seen that we're used to, that right. they don't know. So those are one thing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, the parents do need to brace them. Yeah. Now, the, the parents may not even really know, but just right. encourage them. Look, this is going to be different Thanks. than when we've gone before. Yeah. Right. Very good. So make sure they understand that they have um, that there's not going to be Sunday school. That's right. one of the things. Also, uh, we're not going to have children's church for about a month. So yeah. those are kind of some things that they need to understand this is is going to happen right. so um, well, now with them not having children's church is that one of the things that we want to keep them engaged yes and uh, so, and so what are we going to do with that we've got some cool little um bags that we're going to have for them and it's got um some crayons in it and it's got it's going to have a worship bulletin and some things like that and it's not um so much to keep them busy as it is to keep them engaged in um, our worship. And so it's gonna have things for them to fill out that have to do with the service, and it's gonna um, help them to um, be able to do the things and participate in the way that, that, yeah. that they're able to. Because yeah. kids are made for worship, Amen. just like a big, us big kids are. Yeah. They're made for worship too, and, and we need to be able to, they just do it a little differently. Right. And Absolutely. so we need to be aware that they can um, participate, and sure. that's our, our goal for them. And we so. definitely want them to participate. Now, what's some preparation as we wrap this up? What are some preparations that you think for the parents and the kids? Okay, so um, make sure that they're all ready to go as far as guess what they might have grown since two months ago and so their their church shoes might not fit anymore right. so you want to make sure that they have everything ready um if you're going to have them wear a mask um, which we're strongly encouraging that the, that everyone wears a mask if you're going to have your child wear a mask let's not have it be sunday morning the first time they ever put it on right. um because they're going to be fiddling with it and so you might need to practice that mm -hmm. those type of things and um just be prepared um right. and show them what what to to how to wear it and and do those things um those are the big things that i wanted to mm -hmm. let them know make sure you talk right. to your kids about it yes. and have expectations and let, let them know and we are excited again we're we're so excited to get to have oh yeah on sunday morning and so, <laughs> so we excited. want to encourage you 
to come and, and again, mask or encourage, but that's not a requirement, but that we're going to leave that up to the individuals. But spatial distancing will be something we'll observe. Right. Um, and we will be having ushers showing you where you can sit and then we'll be spreading people out. So anyway, just they need to just be ready for that. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. Carrie, thank you for coming and being a part and helping us with our kids because it's really exciting and we want them to be ready for church. Ready for church. All right. Very good. <laughs> thank you. So, folks, those are the three things uh, that you need to know about, you should know for First Baptist West. Well, we're about now to introduce a new segment to our program that we've never done before. But, John, let's, let's get this thing started, all right? All right. Well, our, our, our new segment is Where Are They Now? And so what I wanted to do tonight is I want to reintroduce to you or introduce to you uh, a, a family that means the world to me. And I, I, I fell in love with this couple uh, when we first came to First Baptist West and uh, just so excited. This is Jonathan and Carrie Rogers and, and all the kids. And so, guys, how are y'all doing? We're doing great. Hi, Harold. Hey, man, it's so good to see all of y'all. You guys uh, have been on my heart for the last month or so, and I've been praying for you. And then all of a sudden, God began to put this new segment on my mind. And I thought, well, who do I put on first? And I thought, well, wait a minute. Who have I been praying for? For some reason, God laid it on my heart. And man, we're so honored to have you guys uh, come and join us here on our Facebook Live program tonight. Well, we're honored to be here. We miss all of our First West friends, for mm -hmm. sure. Oh, great. Well, hey, Facebook Live program you, you've added some since uh, since we <laughs> saw you last, right? Yeah, we, we left three and now we're six. <laughs> Man, God multiplies, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. That's so right, how are you guys? Oh, go ahead. Introduce oh, us. I was going to say, so this guy back here, some of y'all remember him. This is Caleb. He's nine now. He was a little wow. one-year-old when we left. So yeah. he's going into the fourth grade. And then we have Adeline, who was our first addition after we left. She is now right. going into first grade. She'll be seven this fall. And these yahoos right here, Levi and Joseph, they're five and they'll be kindergartners this fall. Wow. Well, congratulations, man. It is exciting uh, to see, see everybody that, that we didn't know, but it's good to get to know them now. So. So you guys were here when I first came, and uh, it wasn't long. How, how long had y'all were y'all at First Baptist West or in Lawton? Do you remember? Yeah, we were in Lawton for four and a half years, and uh, First West, I think, was the only church I visited, and Gene Peterson snatched me up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gene is a good snatcher, right? <laughs> So, well, that's exciting. So uh, now you guys were here and you had a, a great ministry whenever I first came. You, you guys were doing a home Bible study for military families. We were. Yeah. And that, well, we don't tell anybody else this, but that was still our favorite home group that we've ever had. All right. There you Well, believe me, that there's not a whole lot of people that watch this. So your secret's probably still going. To <laughs> <laughs> but we'll try to get it out to as many people as we can. And we'll break that news to them. Now, now the thing was, is after when we got here and you guys were probably one of the first uh, family, military families that left after I came here. And man, you, you want to talk about a heartbreak. I was like, Lord, are there going to be a lot of these over my ministry here? And you know what? There were. <laughs> there yeah. have been. There yeah. have been. So we, we were really sorry to see you go. And man, it broke my heart. And uh, but you guys moved to Colorado Springs, am I right? That's right. Now, what did you do up there and how long were you there? So we were uh, blessed. We were able to be there for four years. So mm -hmm. we were up at Fort Carson for four years. And uh, that was actually where we got out of the Army and uh, started doing what we're doing now. That was uh, where we took our first uh, full-time uh, ministry job. Now, now the twins were born in Colorado, right? Yes, and so was Adeline. Adeline was oh, okay. Born, Adeline was born. Yes, right after uh, a deployment uh, in 2013, and then the twins okay. came just, uh, 15 months later. <laughs> wow, very good. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, now, now, share with uh, share with people that may not be familiar with uh, 
you, you God really worked for through you with those twins, right? Gave you some special blessings at that time, right? Definitely. I'll let uh, I'll let Carrie talk a little bit because, well, she's prettier and smarter than me. So, <laughs> yeah, that's usually you know, the way it is, huh? Story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when I was 22 weeks pregnant with the twins, my water broke. And um, we went into the hospital and found out at that time that they were not viable and they were fully expected to come that weekend. So doctors told us to go ahead and take Pitocin and get it over with in a gentle way. The doctors were very great, but very honest about um, their chances of survival being not any. And so we chose not to take Pitocin and God chose to stop my labor and keep them inside. So we stayed, me and the twins stayed inside the hospital for five weeks until they were born. And then, hold on baby. And then um, they stayed in another three months of the roller coaster ride of the NICU, but both made it out of there. And Amen. A long journey, are. but he was there the whole time. Definitely an amazing experience. Oh. And Levi had cataracts. He wants us to tell you. Oh, that yes. Way, right? Yeah. The next time we went to the doctor, they were gone. They were gone. That's, wow. Right? Praise yeah. the Lord. Well, that's why I, I knew some of that. And I really want you all to share because, man, it was a I remember uh, when you guys got back in contact with us and wanted us to be praying and uh, for, for you and praying for the twins. And well, we, we've just been amazing amazed to see how god has just blessed you guys and it's, it's just been so good and man to see them actually growing up is it's just so cool man i appreciate y'all sharing that thank you so so you were in colorado for a while you got out of the military while you were there right yes and then you moved to texas again yeah the promised land was calling <laughs> Well, you, you actually skipped over it, went past the panhandle and down, but that's okay. I mean, you must miss your calling a little bit because you went to the south, but that's okay. Our, our navigation was off a little. Yeah, just a little bit. You just a little bit. But so if you if you it was the promised land, yeah, you went south a little, little bit farther. So, so yeah, where, where, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, the pediatrician they're they're when they were one years old, the pediatrician or the uh, pulmonologist. Mm -hmm finally said, man, you guys need to move, move back to Texas. Uh, their, their, their lungs aren't doing so hot. You know, they were getting sick a lot. So by God's uh, <laughs> providence, you know, we got a job here down in Fort Worth uh, at a church called Christ Chapel Bible Church. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and we have a couple different campuses and we work at our West campus that's out in Alito next to Weatherford. And um, so that's about 20 minutes west of downtown Fort Worth. And okay. uh, that was totally by God's provision. And um, I was able to do seminary while we were here as well right. as do men's ministry. Um, so all because of these jokers, we are now out of the army and in full-time ministry. <laughs> wow. Wow. So Carrie, you go from military wife to pastor's wife. Yeah. Wow. Uh, how, how was that a change? You know, I think for us, it, it, the ministry itself, just with people, you know, is similar, but the people we're ministering to is definitely a lot different in the church right. as opposed to the military world. So now I get to be a children's director at our church, which I love, um, the first couple of years back here was really great to be by family um, right? because Jonathan was gone, you know, between seminary and full-time ministry was a pretty busy schedule. So it was great sure. to have help as these kiddos got bigger and stronger and it's neat to stay involved in our, you know, new church here in a new way. Oh, absolutely. So I, I know though, uh, having with my wife and some of the struggles that she goes through as a pastor's wife uh i, I just, just want you to know that we're praying for you and and i know god has suited you well he, he has put you two together and uh uh he's, he's going to bless everyone that you're around especially in your church so 
uh, but we will continue to be praying for you guys, man. What, what are some things that God's been showing you since you left First Baptist West? What, what if you if you could think of maybe something that said, man, this is where God is showing us. Do you have something that you'd like to share with us about what God may be telling you or teaching you, uh, grown you since you left here? Yeah, that's really great. Um, one thing uh, that's been fun over the last uh, couple of years to just think about is uh, what it really means to be uh, a new creation in Christ. Like what it means to be... Um, to have Christ's righteousness, to be Amen. a whole new being. And I think that has been so <laughs> much fun to explore and just uh, for God to, you know, open our eyes to uh, me in particular. Um, and it's just been neat to know that we can live the Christian life because we have new hearts and we have new minds. And we have the help of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so there really is no condemnation for those who are in, in Christ Jesus. Like Roman, Roman eight is, is for real and we don't have to feel the guilt and shame, but we can live our lives for Jesus to, to the father's glory. And we can do that through the power of the Holy spirit. And it has so, been so much fun to just explore Amen. that and to try to live that out. Amen. Well, it, it's, it's just exciting to hear what God is doing in your life. And, uh, how he's blessing you, both of you and, and your kids. And he's using you now in a, in a full-time ministry. And we want you to know that we're, we're proud of you. We're so excited to even to have been a, a small part of your, of your life and your ministry. And uh, we want to continue to stay in contact with you and uh, encourage you. And if there's anything that we can do, uh, just real quick before we go, though, because I know you, you guys probably have an evening with your kids that you got to get to, but uh <laughs> I, I will. I will want to mention to everyone, uh, especially Linda, who is watching tonight, that uh, whenever we first got on with you about six fifteen, uh, Linda and I, and I told you, Linda and I had talked about were you going to be wearing your A and M stuff, and Linda, they weren't. They, <laughs> neither of them had anything A and M on, and it blew our mind, blew my mind. And, but now you see, in between the time that I talked to them and now, look at them, and they're decked out. <laughs> So, so we, we thought it was pretty cool. So you guys are looking good in the A and M in the A and M. What do you call that? Is that they call it maroon or? Maroon. Oh yeah, maroon. Don't be Aggie calling maroon. it purple or anything, Harold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's oh man. You, not us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, but we, we know you got an Oki in your family. You told me that. He claims to be an Oki. So, so, so to him, I'm going to say real quick, Boomer Sooner. <laughs> Did oh. you hear that? Boomer Sooner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I, thank you so much for coming. And, and we, you gave of your evening tonight. And we're so honored that you did this. And we enjoyed getting to visit with you and hope that you kind of enjoyed hanging out with us just a little bit. And man, we've been getting a lot of comments of people saying they're proud of you. They love you. They miss you. So uh, people were excited to know that you guys were coming on tonight. Well, before we close out, can, can I take a moment just to pray over y'all? Would that be okay? Thank you. All right. Well, let me pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for your watch care. And God, thank you for the friends that we get to make in our lives that Lord, once they come into our lives, they, they never are truly gone. And, and we thank you for Jonathan and Carrie and the kids. Care. And God, God I thank you that I got to serve the just friends a, a that we get to make in our as lives. Their pastor, that, Lord, but Lord, once I they fell come into our lives, them, they, and Lord, I thank you for laying them on my heart to be praying for them over the past month and then leading us together uh, to be on the program tonight. So father, I now pray for them. I pray for their family. I pray for their ministries and their church. That God, you would just bless the people of their congregation like you bless the, our people uh, with their presence. And God bless them in their physical bodies. We thank you for the great blessings that you've given them and the great testimony they have uh, with the twins and with, with all their kids. And that, Father, you could just continue to use them in a great way for your kingdom. And God, just um, be with them now as they continue to progress in, in the things that you have for them. And thank you for allowing us to be reconnected again. 
And we thank you again for your love and your grace. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, guys, thank you again so much for, for joining in and just visiting with me. You guys are great, great fun. And I mean, you haven't changed any, so we love it. Y'all look the same, <laughs> except a little, little, little facial hair there now. But Yeah, uh, it, it we're a lot more gray. It was longer yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I remember seeing some pictures, and it looked like you had more. But, hey, thank you all so much. And y'all have a great evening, okay? Thanks, All right, Harry. God bless you guys. We'll, we'll see you all a little bit later. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. Bye. All right. All right. Hey, man, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed uh, visiting with uh, the, the Jonathan and Carrie, and uh, we're just going to continue to pray for them. Well, before we get back, come back, we're wanting to now do our second commercial. We got a commercial here, and then we're going to go right into our Bible study. And after our Bible study, we'll come back, and we'll have Barry Cornish. I, I finally persuaded him to come and be on our program. So we're looking forward to that. So hopefully you'll enjoy uh, this commercial and, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we'll go right into our Bible study from there. So John, roll our second commercial. 2020 was a rough year for First Baptist West. We've had to cancel our worship services. That included no more hearing of the word in person. And one of the hardest difficulties we face so far which is canceling time of fellowship to enjoy one another's company. And the small ray of light that was False Creek has also been put out. But there is a new light of hope. There is our summer camp of 2020. First Baptist West students will be able to enjoy a time of fellowship, relaxation, and worship in this beautiful cabin. Ooh, look at those nice rooms and nice patio all up in their woods. Now join with me as we meet together July 8th through the 10th for a fantastic voyage into the great outdoors of Broken Bow, Oklahoma. The cost will be $70 per person. That'll provide you for your meals while we're in the cabins. That'll provide your cabin fee. And that'll also provide you a beautiful t-shirt designed by yours truly. However, on the way up and the way down, you'll need to bring money or at least a packed lunch. And dinner on the way home will not be provided. Well, I guess it will be provided, but if you want to eat out, you'll have to bring your own money. Registration will be coming shortly. Stay updated. Stay tuned. Well, hey, everybody, we'll be getting back to our program here in just a second. But I wanted to take a, a few moments and just discuss some things out of the Bible with you, uh, if you don't mind. And what I want to do tonight is I want to look at uh, something very important. Uh, last couple of weeks, I've been sharing with you about how Samson uh, got the power that he had from the Spirit. And that how that we as Christians need to know God, uh, that we could grow closer and have more power uh, in, in our own spiritual lives. Tonight, what I want to talk about is, is about prayer. Now, I'm going to use a text of scripture that we're all really very familiar with. And it's found in the book of Luke, chapter 18, uh, verses 10, 11 and 12. And it says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now, we know the rest of the story that the publican was also there and he, that he beat upon his chest and said, God, forgive me, uh, a sinner. And we look at the first guy, though, and, and if you're like me, we're pretty quick about being able to judge this guy and say, man, what was he thinking? <laughs> what was going on in his mind that he would be like this to where he would literally stand up and, and talk about himself as he was praying? Well, I, I want to draw attention to something, though, in this text that I think that all of us have to be really, really careful about. And it's in verse 11. The Pharisee, and listen to what it said, stood and prayed thus with himself. 
In other words, he was literally talking to himself. He really wasn't praying. Now, he used the word of God there. He used Lord, I thank you that I'm not. But it says that he was praying thus to himself. And this is something that if we're not really careful, it will find our own prayer lives can sound uh, pretty familiar with this guy's. Now, we don't ever want to think that we're going to be telling God, thank you, that we're not like all these people and start naming names. But if we're not real careful, we can end up being just like this in the where we're basically not even praying to God. We're, we're just talking about ourselves. And Christopher Shaw came up with two things that I want to share with you tonight that I found when we're talking about praying. And the first thing was, be careful when you pray that we're, we're not doing all the talking. Because we can end up being, that's our prayer time, is that we're just, we're just talking. We're, 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 we're doing all the instruction. We're doing everything that there is to be said. As a matter of fact, Ecclesiastes 5.1 tells us this. Walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifices of fools. For they do not know that they do evil. You hear what it says here? That Be careful when you go to, the, go to God. And then it tells us here to draw near rather to hear than to give sacrifice. In other words, don't do all the talking. Our prayer life, if we're going to grow and we're going to truly know God, it's going to be because we, we listened. We listened to God. As, as I shared with you last week, that uh, idea of that knowledge is the one of experiencing. And it's being able to listen to God. Draw near to hear. And don't give the sacrifice of fools. That sacrifice of fools is a fool does all the talking. A wise person will listen. A prudent person will listen. But a a fool will just blabber on. So be very careful when we pray that we don't do all the talking. Man, God's got a treasure full of wisdom that he wants to give us if we'll just listen. The second one, it's easy to pray about ourselves. Be real careful when we begin to pray that we don't dominate our prayer time about me or I, about our desires, about our needs, even about our confessions. Our prayers need to be bathed with, of course, confession of our sins. But then they need to be outwardly, seeking God's wisdom, seeking God's guidance for others. But we need to be careful that our prayer doesn't become about us, that I talk about me all the time. That we're praying to God and not to self. Now, what, what we have to do, though, is we have to begin every prayer time by saying, God, I know who you are, and guide me tonight. Guide me today. Guide me this morning. And that we make sure that our prayers are to him and not to ourselves. That they're about him, listening to him, and not just saying a bunch of words like a fool. So I want to encourage you tonight. Spend time with God in prayer. But can I encourage you to do this one thing? Do a lot more listening than talking. And I promise you that when you step out of that prayer time, you will be much better. But let's also be careful not to be judging this guy. When if we go back and look at our prayer time, hmm, just something to think about. Let me pray with you as we go on with our program tonight. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the program that we've had tonight. Thank you. God, for guiding us and protecting us. And Lord, thank you for wanting to have fellowship with us as your children. And Father, I pray that tonight people are paying attention and that, Lord, as we enter into our prayer time from this point on, that we'll listen. We'll have a conversation with you. But Lord, we won't do all the talking and it won't be about us. That, Father, we will be having hearts for people around us, especially in these difficult times. God, I thank you for our church. I thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, might you continue to bless, bless all of our efforts as we reach people for Jesus. And it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Thank you. And let's get back to our program, okay? Hi, and welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed our second ever commercial uh, for our uh, Facebook Live and also for our Bible study. Uh, thank you for sticking around for that. And I want to remind all of our students as you watched uh, the commercial for our Bible studies and different things for our youth groups that John will be having the information out uh, just in the next uh, week or so about our retreat that we're going to be having that's coming up in July. 
but also for the summer activities. So keep keep an open mind and open eye for that because we're going to be getting those to you just as soon as we can. Well, before we wrap up the show tonight, we've got one more special guest that I finally was able to uh, con into coming on with me. Uh, I had to maybe use some pastoral rank on him. No. <laughs> but Barry is, is here, Barry Cornish, and uh, Barry, thanks for coming and joining us You're tonight. You're welcome. So uh, uh, I want to introduce to you to some people that we, I know we have people that really don't attend our church, so they may not know who you are, but Barry is our associate pastor, and he's in charge of the education and administration and a whole lot of other things that, uh, that he does around here that uh, doesn't get credit for. And, of course, Barry likes being in the background. Right. But today... Tonight we got him here uh, in the in front of the camera. Yeah. So <laughs> reluctantly, was, but yes, yes, he was so thrilled to get to be here. So Barry, how are you doing? Doing good doing until good. ten minutes until, ago, right? until I walked in here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, this is going to be painless. That's, I promise. That's you. what they tell me. That's yeah. what they tell me. All right, well, we'll get it over with. The nurse you. used to say that about the shots too. Yeah, well, <laughs> it lasts a little bit longer than a shot, but not near as painful. So, uh, so how long have you served here at First Baptist West? Uh, April was 19 years. 19. 19 years. 2001. Came in 2001. Okay. So what I, was, I, I know what your title is, <laughs> as I just told, Associate Pastor Education Administration, but that's not all you do. What, what are just names some of the things, let them know what you do. Well, I walk around this building. I'm listening for air conditioners that are left on or fans that are left running uh, once a month. i got to check the ice machine and make sure the filter's cleaned. Uh, Walk around, just look, inspect things, look for look for things, or listen for things, uh, anything that might be broken or not working right. Uh, that's kind of what I look at, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, just have kind of a knack for that. So, right. uh, stay busy. I am in my office, so um, <laughs> you know, uh, I sign checks for for Linda and, and keep her going. We do hire uh, preschool staff uh, for our preschool and nursery care, and. Right. Uh, Oh, line up the uh, lawn mowing. Uh, in fact, that's happening this week. We've got guys here working on the air conditioners right now, doing our preventive maintenance. Got a busted uh, glass door in the front that we're slowly but making progress on. Yeah. So, you know, things like that. And plus you keep uh, charge over the, the calendar. And I do try to keep, yeah, I do try to keep the master calendar so we don't <laughs> double book on anything. Yeah. So, as you see, Barry is a... A jack of all trades, master of all trades, actually. So when people ask me, hey, so what do you do? I say, well, I just hang out and collect a check. Well, that's one of the reasons I get to hang out and collect a check is because Barry's usually always busy. But I appreciate the job that you do, and, and you do a great job, and uh, it's, it's an honor to get to be serving here on staff with you. But just enough of that. Let's, let's get on with some other stuff. So you, you, you were here. You're, you're here for what now? How many years? 19, 19. years. Okay, and before here, you served at... Cameron Baptist Church. Okay, and how long were you there? Thirteen and a half years. So you've been doing this a long time. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> Some days seem longer than others, others right? Yeah, really, they really do. Okay. Especially then, the last two months. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to talk about that here in just a few minutes. I get, wow, last few months have really seemed like they've gone forever. They've been fast, but they've lasted right. forever, right? right? So did you go to Cameron right after seminary? Uh, it was, uh, I think it was, 80, I graduated in 84, started there in 86. Okay. Uh, so I, I had graduated seminary and, and uh, had interviewed with some churches and nothing happened, so we decided to move back to the Lawton area. So we moved back and rejoined our home church, and uh, of course they, they put me to work. Uh, wanted to elect me as a deacon, but uh, the pastor talked to me more about something later down the road. Mm -hmm. So, and then in 86, uh, they were uh, able to bring me on staff. Oh, okay. So, Deacon Barry. I, 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 this is the first I've heard of this. So, <laughs> uh, it may have been a deacon. All Could right. have been, yeah. Well, Could have been, would have been. <laughs> what a turn. What a turn, huh? So, uh, now you, you said coming back. You you grew up around here, right? Yeah, I grew up uh, on a farm uh, west of Geronimo, a couple of miles. Uh, we moved out there in 19... 63 or 64, uh -huh. uh, had a little 80 acre farm, uh, had some cows and horses, and did a little bit of farming, uh, not a whole lot, uh, but uh, did get to grow up on the farm, learn how to hunt and fish, and run the creeks. But you, you, you graduated from Lawton, right? Yeah, yeah, and after uh, six years at, at uh, Geronimo, uh, we decided we would uh, try to uh, attend the Lawton schools because they were offering some things that 
they didn't offer in Geronimo, and uh, that was for me. It was uh, banned. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, attended Eisenhower Junior High, starting in '71. Uh, okay. And graduated from '70 uh, there in '73, and then uh, high school in '76. Okay. And then you went to directly to semin uh, college here. Yeah, I went to college at uh, Cameron University from '76 uh, to '80. Okay. Uh, or 81. I took a little bit longer. My dad passed away in the middle of my college experience. Okay. And so sent me back a little bit. So it was 81 before I graduated. Oh, okay. All right. Then you went to Southwestern. Then we headed off to Southwestern uh, right at uh, fall of 81. Okay. And then graduated there in 1984. Okay. All right. So you say we. Talk about your family a little bit. So you, you're married? And yeah, I am married. At least I think I was when I left the house this morning. <laughs> After she sees this, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, we got married in 1978 and married my high school sweetheart. We met in the 10th grade. Okay. And, uh, and then we got married two years after high school. We were both both 20. Uh, then we, of course, went to seminary. Uh, it was during that time that my oldest son, John, was born in 1982 at uh, Harris Hospital uh, there in Fort Worth. And then uh, Brian came along in 1984. Uh, a little story about John as I came back from a mission trip in North Dakota, which is back then was about as far as I'd ever been away from home. And I came back, and uh, Tammy had a little bunny rabbit wrapped up in a box. It wasn't a real one, a toy one. And so that was my surprise that we were ready to have our first child. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we had John in, in, in 82, and then, uh, of course, we took care of him and, and did school too. And then John, Brian came along in 84. That was just before we were going to move back. Uh, so, and then uh, Grace was our, our, our late one. She was born in 91. Okay. Now, John and Brian were both born at Harris Methodist Hospital in Fort Worth, so technically uh, they're Texans. Now, I don't usually admit that. <laughs> John doesn't either because he's a big OU fan. Right. Uh, but Grace was actually born in uh, Midwest City, Oklahoma, uh, at a midwife clinic in 1991. Okay. So, uh, and, and, then, and then I have 12 grandkids, uh, which keep me busy. Right and uh, not as much lady with the uh, the uh, COVID thing going on. Right, uh, get to see some of them, but uh, not all of them because some of them, uh, Joseph, uh, one of Brian's children, does have some medical conditions, so they've been real careful about sure. exposing him and anything. And and they're all all but what two are right here, right? Uh, yeah, well, right now they're all three. Oh, they're all here. <laughs> okay, they're all here. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Brian has been here for several years. He. Okay, uh, right. He, uh, he's working at Altus Air Force Base for a contractor uh, in security over there. And then uh, John is here temporarily. Uh, he is in the progress process of moving to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Mm -hmm. And then Grace has been here since she got married. Okay. And a quick note about about Brian is I had met him before I met you guys. Yeah, you actually did. I, I, knew, I knew him when he was over at First Baptist in Frederick. Frederick. Yeah. And uh, so I thought it was really funny whenever I came over here, then I realized who he was. <laughs> and so we already had a connection. So you got a great family. God's blessed you there. Great, some great grandkids and uh, things are going well yes. for them. Okay, good. Ministry. Uh, you've been, as we talked about, you've been in it quite a while. Uh, what has, especially lately, what, what have been some challenges in the ministry that you've seen, uh, especially over the last... A year or two, and then even now. Well, first of all, I am getting older. My body keeps telling me that every time I get up, uh, so I can't do some of the things that I used to do. Uh, the technological technological changes that are mm -hmm. coming along are, are, are seem to be difficult. I am learning some. When I was a kid, uh, Zoom meant you got on your bicycle and you went Zoom Zoom. Yeah, that's <laughs> you <good>. made noises. <laughs> but now Zoom means you going to Sunday school. So it's been an adjustment. Uh, to, so the technology has changed some. Uh, the principles of, of ministry haven't really changed that much. Right. But uh, I guess the technology has probably been the big one, and just just growing older. And did you did you ever dream that that you'd be sitting with your pastor on on the program for no, television? No, no, never did. Never did, <laughs> never did dream about that. You started having nightmares recently, though, huh? So. And we'll probably have them for some time to come. <laughs> Every time I look at this. Yeah, no, you're doing well. You're doing really well. So what what about personally? What are some things that have been challenging to you through all of this COVID? Things? Well, you know, everything has changed. 
changes the way you shop, changes the way you bank, uh, changes the way you pay your bills. You know, right. I've paid you know I've paid some bills online before, but you know, I've had to add some more to it. Uh, I never had paid my taxes online before. I actually did that uh, this year. Uh, so uh, I guess you know things like that, uh, mm -hmm. and just uh, knowing uh, you know knowing who to trust on the, with, with all this COVID stuff. You know. And, Who's telling the truth? Right. You know, who's, who's knowing who's telling us the truth or who to listen to. Uh, watched a lot of news early on, uh, but got tired of doing that and got tired of hearing it. A lot of it was, seemed like it was repetitive. And, right. And uh, uh, it was more discouraging sometimes than, than anything else. Right, right. So what, what about as we're getting ready this week uh, to open up, uh, what are you seeing some things differently there? Well, the main difference is just not being able to get what we need and when we want it from right. our normal resources. Right. Uh, you know, we we use uh, SAMs a lot, and you know, the hand sanitizer has been a hard thing to come by. Uh, the the uh, Clorox wipes, the Lysol, uh, were were difficult to come by. We were able to get the mask and gloves and things like that, but uh, there's just been some problems getting some of the things that we right. need. Although I think we're in pretty good shape to start start off. And, and we're looking forward to it. Of course, it's all brand new to us. As I keep telling everybody, none of us has ever done this before. Right. I've never, we've never opened up from a closing like we have been, or not necessarily closing, just not having our building open. Right. So, yeah, it's been quite a bit different. Uh, what do you see God doing through this, though? Well, uh, I think He's teaching several things. You know, flexibility is not one of my strong suits. <laughs> Somebody said one time, blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken, uh, sort of like a rubber band. Yeah. Uh, so I think flexibility, uh, trusting in things that probably we shouldn't uh, be trusting in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the government and the economy and things like that. Uh, and so I think those are a couple of the things that, main things that uh, God has been right. teaching us teaching me teaching you you're right right and so uh as we get ready to close this up is uh things are all crazy now it's different than we've ever seen it before what what are some things that god has used to encourage you so maybe that you could share and share with anyone that may be watching well, need some encouragement the primary thing is just the scriptures yeah. you know reading the scriptures uh, it's it's sort of like ground zero you know it right. keeps you you know you know where you're where you're, where you're at in fact, you know, the, uh, one of the favorite verses that I have is, is Hebrews 13, 8. Mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in, in this particular time in our life when so many things are changing, uh, it, uh, it's just uh, reassuring to know that Jesus is the same as we read him in the Bible. Right. Uh, today, yesterday, and forever. And he will and he, be the same. Good. And we definitely need that stability. Right. I mean, man, just imagine if we had to worry about God changing as much as the situation are. Such as our when you talk about fluidity, man, things are fluid here. We don't know what happens tomorrow, but we do know that Jesus is the same. Right. So, right. well, good, well, good. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on, Barry. I, I know this is not your comfort zone. No, it's not uh, comfort zone. But, but I, I do appreciate you coming, and I appreciate all the work that you do, and you're a good friend of mine and good good minister alongside me, and I'm excited to get to be a part of it with you and uh, it's been challenging for us all but uh, I think we're doing okay <laughs> I hope so <laughs> I, someone once asked me said uh, pastor how are you navigating through this I said well I don't know but said usually you don't ever know how well you've navigated until you get through it then you can look back and go well we hit some rocks <laughs> and we may not have. but I, I do want to thank you and uh, look forward to Whatever God has for us, I know we're going to make it through, and we make a good team, and at least I think so. And uh, looking forward to uh, continuing to serve with you here at First Baptist West, and just uh, thank you for coming on. Do you mind if I pray over no, you real it, quick? Be fine. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, God, and we thank you for your blessings, and thank you, Father, for just allowing us to minister together. I thank you for Barry. I thank you for our friendship and the relationship that we have. I thank you for allowing me to serve here at First Baptist West with him and the other staff members uh, that we have. And God, I just pray continued physical health for Barry and Lord, that you'd strengthen his body and his spirit. And with all these things that are going on, Lord, that, that sometimes it gets a little challenging, but Lord, we know that you're there. And so I, I just pray for Barry. I pray for, for Tammy and, and, and all of his kids and his grandkids. 
that God, you would just show favor on them at this time and continue to bless them and use them. And Father, I just pray that as we go from this point, that God very could go with confidence, with an assurance, and a steadfastness, Lord, knowing that all the things that he's doing, all the labor that he's giving is not in vain. That, Father, you're going to use him and you're going to, uh, to work things for his good. And again, I thank you for him. I thank you for just allowing us uh, to work together. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, before we close off, I want to encourage you uh, to be in church Sunday morning. If you're able to be in your church, wherever it is, please uh, be there. If you're a part of First Baptist Westman, I want to encourage you, come and join us. We're excited. Now, remember, though, our services are at 830 and 1045, not 8 o'clock, but 830 and 1045. And some things are going to be just a little bit different uh, when you come in. So please be ready. Um, to to be flexible, as Barry just talked about a few moments ago. Uh, but we're going to have a great time. I am so excited. Uh, every time I think about getting to have you all back in church, uh, it's, it's exciting. Now, if you're not able to make it or you don't feel comfortable or maybe you haven't been feeling well, we encourage you to stay home and enjoy our services at 1045 through our live stream like we have been. So we're going to keep that going. We were doing it prior to this. We're going to do it afterwards. So uh, 1045 for our live stream, also for our small group times. Now our small groups are beginning to adjust their, their times. So if you go on our, our web page and look down to each one of those classes, not only will the class name be on there, but also their starting time. So please check those out as they may have changed for this coming Sunday since we're actually going to be having worship services here at First Baptist West. But we also want to encourage you to uh, join us again next Wednesday night as we continue with our First, uh, First Baptist West Facebook Live. And we're going to have a great time, some more uh, special events coming. And so I know you're going to have a great time. But God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to tune in with you or you join us live Sunday morning at 830 and 1045. Have a great evening. God bless you.